These are the broadest sanctions imaginable. These are sanctions against uh, Iran's oil sector. They make it illegal, basically, for any country to do business with Iran. And by illegal, I mean the U.S. would sanction those, co those countries if they do business. Um, this is very similar to what we saw with Saddam Hussein in Iraq. We saw that these sanctions uh, imposed you know, crippling humanitarian uh, uh, effects on the people of Iraq, killed half a million people, and didn't depose of Saddam Hussein. In fact, it actually entrenched him and his regime. Uh, we're afraid that this is going to do the same thing. Uh, and it's not just that it's bad for the regular people inside of Iran, but for the first time, these are sanctions that are actually bad for ordinary people in the U.S. Uh, and for the economies here in the U.S. as well as the economies in Europe. These are sanctions without a purpose. There's no objective that has been clearly laid out. Are these sanctions to topple the regime? Are these sanctions to pressure the regime back to the table? Are these sanctions for containment purposes to prevent the regime from obtaining nuclear weapons or a nuclear weapons capability? That hasn't been spelled out. And so when you, you haven't spelled out that end goal, it's impossible for that sanctions regime to actually have its intended effect because the intended effect is unknown. These are sanctions that uh, the, the, the sponsors have actually acknowledged Okay, this is going to raise gas prices a little bit here in the U.S. It might, it might you know, take away some jobs here in the U.S., um, but it's so important that we need to do it, even though we've never seen these sanctions actually work. Meanwhile, in Europe, they've talked about imposing similar sanctions, actually imposing an embargo on Iranian oil exports so that Europe wouldn't be able to purchase those. Um, and it looked like they were going to go through with it until Spain, Italy, Greece said, now hold on, we're teetering right now. If you actually raise gas prices here, if you cut off our oil imports uh, from Iran, we're going to go under. And that's going to create far more damage um, than, than we could expect from actually pursuing a different course with Iran, focused on a way out of this sort of escalating confrontation uh, and, and more towards diplomacy than just pressure for pressure's sake. There are 30 years of just on both sides. Uh, strong incentives for politicians to actually sabotage diplomacy, to ratchet up rhetoric, to escalate tensions. And there are rewards on both sides. Here in the U.S., you see President Obama heading in toward, uh, towards a re-election in which there have been real concerns uh, in the perception of his support among Jewish voters because of his approach towards Israel and, you know, as part of that, his approach towards Iran, that he hasn't been tough enough on Iran. Um, and so you've seen sort of moves on the Obama side to uh, to, to get tougher on Iran, at least in, in terms of perceptions. On the Iranian side, you have the same thing. And, you know, for instance, the, uh, the embassy incident that happened last week, a lot of people saw this and thought this is Iran being Iran, doing bellicose things. But really what that was, was it was the domestic political situation in Iran, in Iran sort of rearing its head. It was the, uh, the Speaker of the Parliament actually, uh, we have reason to believe, actually orchestrated those, uh, those, those mobs in order to undercut uh, the president, Ahmadinejad, who was making some moves towards uh, having opening up diplomacy with the P5 plus one. And so by uh, sort of putting these mobs into place and, you know, they actually they passed a bill to, uh, to kick the English, uh, the British ambassador out of Iran. By doing those things, it has, you know, disastrous consequences in terms of resolving the conflict but it plays well at home for the speaker, Larajani, to basically get a win over Ahmadinejad and not allow him to have any kind of progress. A lot of people are saying we are already in a covert war with Iran, and this has been going on for years. Um, you know, it's only a matter of time before something happens that we can't back away from. You saw the, the drone incident, you see these explosions, and now with those explosions, it's kind of ironic. Iran, who its leaders so often want to blame the outside world for all of their woes, are saying, no, this was just an accident, this wasn't sabotage, this wasn't covert warfare on us. Now what that does is it, it lowers the pressure on Iran to retaliate. But it's only a matter of time before they, they don't continue to do that um, and it, it escalates out of control.